We are both students at the University of East Anglia in Norwich. Um, last year, we were challenged by an energy company um, to create an environmental initiative to reach out to our fellow students um, on how, how we can all live more sustainably. Um, we decided to focus on a resource which will become a huge issue in the not too distant future. Uh, the east of England receives less than half the national rainfall average of the UK. Um, Jerusalem experiences more rain than Norwich. Barcelona receives more rain than Cambridge. The area also has one of the fastest rates of housing development in the UK. All this is combining to create an unprecedented stress on our natural ecosystems. Yet the vast majority of the people in the UK have very little awareness of their water consumption. Our water supply is finite. 97% of the water on the earth is salt water, which is not suitable for drinking. Um, only 3% is fresh water. 2% um, of this is locked up in ice caps and glaciers. So only 1% is available as drinking water. Now this is taken from our streams, our rivers, which are the lifeblood of our natural ecosystems. And the more we drain from them, the greater the impact on these systems and the greater the environmental damage. Pumping water around the UK also requires a tremendous amount of energy um, to get the water from its natural source into your homes, um, which also contributes to your carbon footprint. So we wanted students to lower their water consumption and challenge conventional beliefs on the most precious of resources. So, what did we do? Well, we challenged university students to wee in the shower. Now, bear with us on this one. What we discovered was the vast majority of people do not actually need a wee when they get up in the morning. So we simply asked them to wait until they got in the shower to do it. The incredibly simple idea saves 12 litres of water every day per person. Scaling this up to our university, we discovered that if everyone at, un at the University of East Anglia took part, we'd save enough water to fill 26 Olympic-sized swimming pools. 26! That's loads! Um, but not only that, the university would also save £18,000 per year from students who lived on campus on top of a reduction in CO2 emissions. We named our campaign hashtag go the flow and launched profiles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as we discovered this would be the fastest way to connect with students. What we discovered is that most environmental campaigns simply raise the awareness of an issue and ask you to do a certain action such as turning off the lights when you leave a room and it's all very boring and we wanted to get people interested and we want students to really engage so we thought what's a little bit controversial what's a bit different so we went for weeing in the shower and um, so how the main problem was we wanted to we wanted to get students to engage with our campaign but what we found was the campaign wouldn't really get off the ground unless we started using guerrilla marketing techniques so we produced teaser videos to generate curiosity plastered the campus with photos and stickers and posters and and all of them simply said hashtag go with the flow and then we launched it comments to our facebook page <laughs> flooded in ranging from fantastic idea and i've been doing that for years um, to, <laughs> to, that's disgusting, that must be unhygienic. So this was a big question a lot of people raised with us. Is it safe, is it hygienic, is it healthy to do this? So this que question was cropping up in interviews, so we consulted med medical people and also environmental people on campus. So urine is actually non-toxic, so that's a, that's a good thing for starters unless you have an infection so you probably just stick to the toilet in that case so combined with the water flowing down into the drain it poses no health risk or um, problem with hygiene so and we actually discovered this was a really bizarre thing we found out there's actually more bacteria on your hands than in your urine so i don't know if that'll make you want to go and wash your hands but. <laughs> Um, so we were absolutely overwhelmed by the response uh, to this campaign. We took surveys to assess the impact it was having. Um, and 18% said they already peed in the shower, which is fantastic. 30% um, decided it's disgusting, I'm not taking part in that. Um, but 52% now said that they would consider uh, peeing in the shower. 
Um, and now it was amazing to see this campaign having an effect. Um, even those who didn't want to take part, at least we were getting them, we were challenging conventional beliefs in water consumption. They had it in their head. Um, we posted about loads of other ways people could save water in the daily routine. Um, other people were always mentioning um, weighing on your compost heap. Um, as students, we're not lucky enough to have compost heaps. <laughs> um, um, and UEA confirmed it was undertaking a full survey as well of all the water pipes um, and to fix any leakages. Um, we began to get some local press coverage on a regional radio station and a few papers. Um, but then, completely out of the blue, our campaign went viral. Um, literally overnight, hashtag go with the flow received coverage from all over the world. Um, we were doing interviews from radio stations in New Zealand, um, Kenya, Peru, Canada, um, and it appeared in newspaper outlets from six continents. Uh, for a number of days, we were talking about peeing in the shower to people across the globe non-stop. A very bizarre experience. Um, <laughs> Go With The Flow featured in The Guardian, it featured in The Independent, um, loads of our papers, um, whilst Debs did a live interview on the BBC News Channel. Um, it's been estimated um, that our campaign reached 40 million people. Um, and our campaign started a debate on several media platforms. And at the heart of the matter, they were discussing a resource that many of us take for granted. Absolutely. So the question is, where do we go from here? Where is the next step? So what we've been doing is we've been having talks with maintenance on campus to install more water fountains. So that's um, incredibly important because it, not only does it reduce the amount of plastic going in, people, if people get reusable water bottles, it actually means a reduction in plastic bottles going to landfill. So that's one way we're um, moving our project forward. And we're also expanding it to speak to people across um, the world. So there's um, a university campus in, at the University of Massachusetts, and they were in, um, encouraging, uh, expressing an interest to roll that up, out in their campus. So we've been in discussion about how they can how it can translate to across the pond. So that's one way we've decided to expand. But we found it was a completely bizarre, mo the most incredible experience. Mm -hmm. It was simply meant to be a quirky campus-based initiative with the hope of making a small difference to our local area. Yet, if two students like us, who study English literature and American history, who live in a city in the middle of nowhere, that's Norwich, yes, <laughs> who, who, <laughs> who have no previous experience with social media campaigns, can create an environmental initiative that stretches across the world, reaching 40 million people then surely all of you can create change. And if you have an idea you think could change the world, we would implore you to do the same. Thank you. Thanks.